The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Now, let me get, <laughs> I'm just, get, just getting blessed just listening to the testimonies. And people, um, do me a favor. All the members, you got testimonies of what's been happening, either miracles of healing, financial testimonies, or um, provision, whatever, like food or what, whatever. Just, if you can get that to our pastors, and then I'll play them. Uh, what I'll probably do is start playing some of them at night as well in, in the program, ten, uh, which we do every night, 7 to 10. But, um, you know, one of the things that the Lord laid on our heart actually quite a number of years ago uh, was with Kingdom Business Fellowship. Actually, Pastor Eric started, the, the, you know, helping me with the first one, and now it's grown. With our business people, and I want to just take a time to talk to you quickly here. Um, the Lord said to me at first, it was raise up a hundred millionaires to fund the end time harvest. I'm talking about in the church, not, not praying that they come, but we raise them up, raise, that God raise them up from obscurity. And of course that number changed to 300 because of Gideon's army of 300. And so we are, we are beginning to see all of that take place even now. And some of the testimonies of some of the business people, which I really want to try to get some of them, are remarkable about what's actually happening right now in the middle of a storm. I mean, you heard the dear lady talking about two contracts, $50,000 a piece in the middle of a storm. So right in the middle of the lockdown, the shutdown, the whatever, the quarantine, the tyranny, let me just call it the tyranny. Quarantine is for sick people. Lockdown is tyrannical because you're locking down healed people. That's another story. But so we believe in God that the Lord is going to take care of you and because we've taught provision. And I want to say this. Every church that has laughed at us and mocked us about teaching on giving, they're the ones that are struggling right now. Every church that follows our pattern, that teaches on stewardship unashamedly, God, I promise you, I'm hearing testimonies of them being sustained supernaturally. So what you are going to see here coming through this, however long the shutdown is, is whatever's of God will remain. Whatever's not of the Lord is going to fail because it's wood, hay, and stubble, and it's built on nothing. It's standing on nothing. We're not here to not, or we're not, sorry, let me say this. We're not here to offend people, but we're not here to not offend people. People are going to get offended. You know, when, when the Bible says preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort. The modern church stays with exhortation, but never reproves or rebukes. And you know, if you have children, it can't always just be exhortation. Rah, rah, we're going to Disney World, we're going to have a party, you want balloons, whatever. There has to come a time when you have to say, I need you to go clean your room. You need to take the dog out. You need to do this, you need to do that. And if you don't do this, then you're going to lose out on that. And as a pastor, we need to share unashamedly the full counsel of God and reprove rebuke. Somebody said, well, people, well, they won't like it and they'll leave the church. They need to leave the church because they don't belong. The, the ones that are true members and they're there, they, they, will, they will allow the word to correct them. I have to be corrected by the word. I have to be corrected by the word of God. And my wife, the same way, we read the Word. The Word is first to us before it's to anybody else. It's first to us. And we preach a simple Word. It's not complicated. It's very simple. So this was the Scripture, and I run on the Word. So this was the Scripture that God gave me right before we went into lockdown. And I'm not going to read the whole passage, but it's from 1 Corinthians 17 and verse 14. I'm going to read from the Amplified. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jaw of meal. Listen to me now. The jaw of meal will not waste away. Or the bottle of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. That means 
It will not fail. It will not run out. That means God is going to take care of you. David said, I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. We pray over every river member. We pray God's supernatural. Number one, protection. God's supernatural provision. Supernatural direction that every single day that you're being led by the Spirit of God and that God is leading you every single day for His purpose and plan. He goes before you. He makes a way where there is no way. He furnishes a table in the wilderness. He is your heavenly Father. And what does the Bible say? If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father not give good gifts to them that ask? I mean, my grandbabies know that I spoil them and I, I, you know, I'm kind of overboard. I mean, um, Emma and Ellie, when they were growing up, whenever they lose a tooth, you know, normally I'd give them five bucks for a tooth because we don't do the tooth fairy thing and the tooth mouse and whatever. But they would say, you bring your tooth to pop-ups and I'm going to give you five bucks. <laughs> that over the years has changed. I'd give them 20 bucks a tooth. And uh, just recently I gave them $100. They looked at me. I said, oh, yeah, this is a very expensive tooth, you know. So they know, they'll come say, uh, Pop-Ups, one, one of my teeth is loose. I said, oh, okay. Is it ready to come out? No, not yet. Okay, well, we know what to do when it comes out, don't we? So they know that I'm going to bless them, you know. They know that Granny and Grandpa are going to bless them. And we know our Heavenly Father. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, say the Lord, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. So God's hand is on, I'm just talking to the River Church, God's hand's on this church, God's hand's on the members. And yeah, this was something that we did not plan. This was something that we knew something was coming. We didn't put our finger on it exactly. But nothing comes as a surprise to God. But I will tell you this, every single member that has grabbed a hold of the Word of God has been sustained supernaturally by the hand of God. And that's the miracle. That's the testimony. And I'm not just talking about people in the church that are rich. I'm talking about some of the people in the inner city that are everywhere. They, God is sustaining them. God is sustaining them. And the Lord will sustain you. And the meal and the oil will not run out. Now, what is happening in the earth today is we're seeing a shaking of the nations. And I'll just tell you this, because I'm also in business, which people don't realize that I've been doing business since when Kelly went home to be with the Lord, you know, on Christmas Day, and I raised my hand and vowed, pledged a hundred million souls and a billion dollars into world missions. That led me into business. One of the businesses, my wife and I, made four million dollars. We've been very public about it. And, but we took most of that, stuck that into the work of God, which I'm happy about. I mean, we didn't use the stuff even to fix our house or pay off our house or any of that stuff. We didn't do any of that, uh, you know. And the Lord put us in this house 17 years ago. And it's, it's really a fixer-upper. I mean, we had to do a new roof, the whole place leaked, um, mold in the place and whatever. So it's like a, it's a long-term construction project. But it's for a purpose. It's not just for us to live here. I don't really care where I live. God just put me in this place. It's a meeting place. And he said that leaders would come here, which they have over 17 years. And there's more things connected to my place while we're here. Otherwise, I'd move tomorrow. I, I can live in a tent. I can live anywhere. I, I've stayed in the outback of Australia in the middle of the open with kangaroos jumping around me. And we, Donick and I slept on the bank of crocodile-infested rivers in Africa. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. I'm actually happy wherever I am. I'm not stuck on any one thing. Everything that we have must have a purpose. If your house doesn't have an eternal purpose, get rid of it. If what you're doing doesn't have an eternal purpose, and obviously the world will get jealous and they will always misinterpret and they'll always try to, well, he, this, and whatever. They don't know you. Why are you listening to them? And why are you trying to please them? Just leave it alone. You work for your father. You work for your heavenly father. You, he's the one that takes care of you. He looks off. No one watching me right now should ever apologize for the blessing of the Lord. Don't ever. Don't even make excuses for it. You're blessed. Somebody said, well, you're really blessed. Yeah, you're blessed. You say, why? My pastor preaches blessing. 
We don't believe in poverty. I mean, there's poverty, but we believe God will deliver you from poverty. And the Lord will increase you and multiply you. The Bible says he delights over the prosperity. He delights in the prosperity of his servants. God, if I as a grandfather delight over blessing my grandkids and I delight in blessing my children, how much more does my heavenly father want to bless and take care of me? He loves you. He loves you. So, and I'm saying all that to say this. Because I've been in 85 countries of the world, I get offers every day. I've got offers right now for masks and for clothing and for ventilators and for every kind of thing imaginable. Uh, they said, oh, you can make money on it. Are you kidding? You think I want to sit making money off of masks? The very thought of it, somebody else can Makes me want to vomit. I'll be honest with you. I, I just, I'm not even interested. And I know there's big money to be made, but I, I, I'm not interested in that. I, listen, so um, I told the person sending me all these, these things, and I said, look, as long as they don't come from China, I, I'll find people in other countries that are in business, and I'll link them there. And if you do the deal, you do the deal. I'm not acting as a middleman. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. My whole focus, these four and a half weeks, is broadcasting every single night. That, that's all I'm focused on. I'm being, tomorrow would be four weeks I've never left the property. I haven't left the property. Some say, why, why didn't you? Because I'm focused just on this. When I wake up in the morning, I'm on the phones. I'm talking to pastors different parts of the world. I'm broadcasting into different places. And I'm, I'm pacing myself, staying focused. I don't read any news articles. I don't watch any television stuff about me, whatever. I mean, it's not a, it doesn't matter. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, I forgave the sheriff. When I think about the arrest, it's like somebody else got arrested. And I, I'll just tell you this right now. I'm probably going to come out with my own mugshot shirt because, you know, Jonathan has pirated the shirt and he's making money off of money. <laughs> I'm teasing you, whatever. But so many people are asking for the mugshot shirt, so I'm designing one and I'm going to come out with my own one. And I've got, I'm going to come up with several designs, and I'm sure everybody's going to love them. But people have been asking me all that. Where can we get the shirt? Where can we get the shirt? So I said, okay, I'm going to design my own shirt. It is what it is. But I have no I, – I, I, when, when I think back at the last number of weeks, everything we've done, we've done in step to exactly what God says. So I'm, I'm just letting you know. I've got a lot of opportunity right now, but I'm not interested in masks and ventilators and all this kind of stuff. I'm just, I'm staying focused flat out on the ministry here, but I'm saying to all our business people, jump on everything that you can. God opened the door for you because we are dealing at the time of the shaking of the nations. And verse six of Haggai chapter two, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once more a little while, I'll shake and make tremble the starry heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. I'll shake all nations and the desire or the treasure, and the precious things of all nations shall come in. I fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house, with its successor to which Jesus came, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace and prosperity. Now, we understand you can look back, and you can see that in the type and shadow, right when you looked at Solomon, and how that God blessed him with riches so that when the queen of Sheba came, she fainted. Whether she fainted or fell under power, we don't really know, but she was, she was like overcome. And she said, the half has never yet been told, never yet been told. So that also refers to when during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, when he sets up his kingdom for a thousand years, that people will come and bring that. But it's also a type of the church. A type of the church, the, the, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former house. Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so in the time of lockdown, in the time of where uh, it looks like there's no uh, uh, situation or whatever, God will give you an internet business, something you'll start. There'll be a solution that you'll be able to reach out and touch people and, and, and help. What if God gave you an idea that would help put a million people to work? 
What if the Lord gave you an opportunity to help people begin to earn an income? So this is very important that you grab a hold of these things. Do not let this time pass you by. You could sit and just watch hours of Netflix and your television and just sit there and eat all your food that you have. And some of you have eaten every kind of stored snack that you had, and you're going to look like a heffalump by the time the thing finishes. So, um, you know, <laughs> let God use you. But wait, wake up in the morning. Set out a plan. Let God use you. And I understand that there are different restrictions in different places, but let God use you, that you're going to come out of this time stronger than before. You say, well, how can you say that? How can you say I'm going to come out stronger than before? Because it's not finished yet. Somebody said, oh, you mean the tribulation hasn't started? No, I'm going to be talking about it today. The tribulation has not started. It's not time right now for the Antichrist. I'm just going to let you that know that. And you just have to watch. You could go back and watch Sunday through Friday of our nightly program. We'll be dealing with the end time prophecy. And in actual fact, this week we're going to be dealing with some other things. But I think tonight, I feel in my spirit, I'm going to recap on the whole week of what we've been doing on the last days in the end times. So I just feel I'm not going to jump into that, but we're going to recap, recap, because there's so many questions people are asking. So God's anointing is upon you. God's anointing is upon you to prosper you even in this season, that you're going to come out stronger than before, that you're going to come out, when people look at you, they're going to be astounded. Your family, your friends, your loved ones. Somebody said, what's a heffalump? It's a heffalump. It's from Winnie the Pooh. It's the big elephant. It's a heffalump and a woozle. Sorry, I talk grandkids um, ling lingo. <laughs> If you ask my five-year-old grandson, AJ, he knows what a heffalump is. So a heffalump, a heffalump. All right, so don't eat too much food. You'll be a heffalump before, or you'll be poo trying to get out of, out of the tree, and you'll be stuck, and people have to come and pull you out. Okay, so <laughs> put the ding-dong down. Stop eating those Debbie cookies or whatever, and the ding-dongs and, and all of those other stuff. And Richard... Only one peanut butter and jelly sandwich every now and then. You can't eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every night. Richard Moore, you know who I'm talking to. You cannot eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches every night, bro. Seriously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the Lord, the Lord's blessing is upon you. God's goodness is upon you. And you have to know that. God's on your side. He's not against you. God's not sitting in heaven to see what can I can I break um, can I break his legs today? What can and let me see what I can take away from him? You, his child. He loves you. He loves you. So get his mind, get his plan, get his purpose, and God will put many things in your hands: vehicles, property. It's all just tools. That's all it is. It's not about collecting all these things. You'll have many things over your life. Things will come. Things will go. You'll sow some things. So it's imperative that you understand what I'm talking about right now. He wants to bless you, and he wants to raise you up. And so I'm going to pray in just a moment. We're going to go to the song, You Know My Name, and we're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed here today. And to be a part, so you're tired, you're offering, and they, they will be giving you all the ways online, on the Super Chat, on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Revival.com, the drop-down box. You can text your gift, and there are many ways that you can give. And the monitors online and on screen, they will tell you exactly what to do to sow seed. So, but you have to grab a hold of this. You have to believe that this is for you. If you don't believe, if you turn in today, you go, that's not mine. It's not yours. It's not yours and never will be yours. It's only for those that take God's word and you take it actually for yourself. I've taken God's word literally, literally. So I want you to grab a hold of this today. How many believe in God for big things this next week? Come on. What we got? The 26th day. Come on, let's just talk about this week here quickly. Let's look at the calendar here. So who's believing God that Monday the 27th is going to be off the chain? 
Who, who believes that the 27th day of April, tomorrow is going to be a supernatural day of increase? Honey, hear you shout. Who believes that the 28th day is going to be amazing? What about the 29th day of April? What about the 30th of April? What about the 1st of May and the 2nd of May? Come on. Come on. This is it. That the Lord will give miracles of provision this next seven-day period, between now and next Sunday. And you grab a hold of it. So if God suddenly met your need or gave you the thing that would catapult you or showed you exactly what that you need to do, how would you react if the thing you were believing God for was met right now? Honey, I thought you'd jump up and make a noise and dance. I don't hear anything in the studio yet. Okay, it was like, who believes? <laughs> Do I have to shout for you? Must I shout for you? Come on. This is the time of, of, of your blessing. Do take your eyes off. Stop looking at what the media is saying. We, this was written way long before any media existed. This was written way long before any constitution was written. This was written beyond be before any Federal Reserve, before any money was printed, this was written. So we take this and we believe this and we trust him and we believe him that he's on your side and he's going to make a way where there is no way he's going to furnish a table. Come on, jump up. Some of you start bouncing on your bed right now. Just jump up and start. Take your pillow and hit your wife with your pillow right now. No, don't hit your wife. She's probably had it with you. Do not hit your wife. But st start jumping on the beds right now. <laughs> Boy, if we can only see what's happening right now in the houses. I'm so glad we're not on Zoom right now. Imagine if I had everybody on Zoom behind me what we would be seeing, it would be, it would be hectic. But anyway, okay, so come on, let's pray together. Let's believe God. Somebody said they're dancing. Somebody said, I'm dancing right now. Other people are shouting. Other people are jumping up and down. And Richard's eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right now. <laughs> I'm teasing. We're friends. I love him. Okay, I'm going to buy you extra crunchy peanut butter, Richard. When I see you, I'll give you a big thing of extra crunchy peanut butter. Come on, let's pray. Let's believe God together right now. Father, for every person that's watching right now, that's trusting you and believing you, that this next week will be a supernatural week of increase and multiplication. I pray over all of the Kingdom Business Fellowship, those that are grabbing a hold of this, that have grabbed a hold of the mandate, that you raise them up from obscurity. And Father, even at the time of shaking, that as these nations are shaken, that into their hands will come the wealth of the wicked. For your word declares that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And Father, I thank you that they shall see supernatural provision. Even as they sleep at night, give them creative ideas, witty inventions. When they wake up in the morning, they know exactly what to do. They will not react in fear. They will not react out of pressure. They will never be pressurized. And even when people say it's a deadline, they'll move the deadline. But Father, they'll be under your hand and they'll be guided by your spirit and you will go before them. Thank you that you send your angel ahead of them to prosper them in their way. And even now the enemy is bound. Devil, you take your hands off of any provision to do with your people. In the name of Jesus. And Father, right now, the angels of heaven are working on their behalf to bring in the provision. And we just see the provision coming in from the north and from the south and from the east and the west and even other ministries that are watching here right now. That, Lord, you'd make a way for them. For all the traveling ministries, that meetings are canceled, that you make a way for them. And everyone that would trust you, that when we come through the other side, there will not be one hair of the head singed, even though they have more hair now than they had when they started out. Not one hair of the head singed, or not even the smell of smoke on their garment. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. In the nombre de Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord the biggest shout of praise. Come on. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.